this is uh, last time this is the continuation of last time so what has hap what happened was because this month starting from the 12th of uh, sorry starting from uh, the 10th of april what we we were experiencing so many long weekends we found that Uh, participation was low so we just decided to move it to the weekdays so that um, everyone can uh, come or if for someone can come they can come and you know it, and if someone wants to do something on the weekend they can do it and we this month these few months we are continuing to have long weekends so we are just going to have these weekday lectures in halves so um it's going to be stretched out a bit but uh, i think it's better for everyone um to have it like this uh so uh dilan uh, you were at the last lecture do you have any questions yes are you able to mona hari thiyena wada no no okay um right so what we are doing is we are continuing to um, discuss what fintech is and uh, understanding what fintech is is uh, is it seems easy but also it's kind of vague which is that it is not very clearly defined uh, last time we were talking about business models changing processes changing um, practices changing so so many the word fintech encapsulates so many things right so it's in that light it's difficult to sort of put a finger on something and say this is fintech and also we are already functioning in a environment all the banks all the banks all the um, especially in sri lanka all have digital systems so then what is fintech right we, that, that is what we discussed last time is is the is are the existing systems fintech you know are they financial technology yes no anyone can say they are right so there are people we we saw there are certain people who call these waves of fintech they, they say from the time the telegraph machine was made and the first message was sent across from london stock exchange to new york uh, th that was when fintech started right but what we need to understand is that um it's using technology for payments or for banking services financial services not only for these services but for any service we find that the value chain you will first find that certain core parts of the value chain gets digitalized and then consequently the 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 ends of the value chains get digitalized as well and what we really see when when we talk about fintech the examples that we see are these ends right the most is the customer end because the core banking end uh, the interbank end those are now more or less digitalized so we very easily see that we run back if we are using card uh, payments we are going back to uh, systems that were made in the 1960s 70s right and they are functioning fairly okay you know that's why when we make a card card transaction it works fine right they ultimately they go and hit those old systems and those systems are still working right so it's uh, so we need to and and we've I, i've interviewed card networks like international at 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 international level and what they always say is we trust those systems and we don't want to mess them up because they work and for us availability is the most important thing so if something is working they they are like if it's not broken don't fix it right so much of the fintech is built on existing systems right um so when even what you were saying about the core banking you don't do a complete overhaul because there are still parts that are working very well and they're not broken so you keep it and right? because there's no particular reason to move them out if you can make certain incremental sort of smaller changes to get them in line with 
the current day requirement and then not sort of slowing the system down or it's not very costly to maintain them and if uh, if the system is working just fine then it really brings the question do we need for the sake of updating things for the sake of bringing new things do we necessarily need to bring them in right so those are the questions when we talk about fintech though it's though it's very interesting uh, and there are also all these new technologies coming about those are the questions that we need to ask right is it necessary uh, so one is that and then what is fintech able to solve that traditional banks through their traditional banking systems have been unable to solve right so the, that's the next question so is is there something in this new world something that is happening in this new world that the old worlds could not solve right so that's the next thing um so let's go to the practical application of uh, things and see how this works right so we have the usual rules and we are still in this part right uh, i'm taking this slow because i want you all to be able to distinguish what is fintech and what is not fintech it's 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 easy to say everything is fintech right but um, really if if the word came up in about 2008 9 10 then it is we are talking about there is some distinction right so so try to figure out what this distinction is right uh, so how do we identify fintech from traditional tech right so there is i found this cartoon saying uh, do you think it's a stretch to call our onboarding process real time right so this their onboarding process is completely manual but it's using paper paper is also a technology right and um, what is real time right so so uh, some uh, we always have this uh, 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 debate what is real time what is instant what is faster so the ceft's equivalent in um uk is called faster payments it's not called instant payments right in some countries they do call it instant payments uh, there is a real time gross settlement right but for the uh, retail payment system they don't use real time they use faster payments right even in sri lanka ceft's we don't call it i mean it is near real time so, but we don't go and promise instant because there can be short delays and also instant is down to like some for some people about 10 seconds is also instant to some people instant is instant like it has to be immediate it goes and then it processes right um uh, so a place that i uh, really saw instant payment was um if you have uh, traveled to uk and if you go in the underground you can use the bank card right your credit or debit card which with nfc and the london underground is really busy so people need to go from the the turn stiles you know the gates that keep opening you have to pass really fast right so if you have a system that is very slow in processing the payment right because from the nfc uh if once it's the in if the card is skipped and then the, it takes time for the payment you know for the for the message to go to the bank and then come back you know like like in a normal post machines then there will be a huge queue right because thousands of people use this uh, at at a, within very short period of time of time and then there i saw what what felt like instant payment to me because the moment you you keep your card the payment is processed and the gate opens right so you can just touch it and keep walking you don't even have to stop walking when you touch your uh, bank card so that is the level of how instant 
in, an instant payment can be. But this is the question. So the whole world is in this process, right? It's not uh, something to do with Sri Lanka or developing countries. Like the, everyone is going through the process of trying to make things faster, working with their legacy systems, uh, and then trying to figure out where, what is, what, what do we really need for all this technology? Um, so let's see how we can distinguish this, right? Um, who is here? Is Dylan here? Let's see. Right. Um, so let's go back to I think we were we're here. All right. Um, so we have um, Dylan. Do, do you are you aware? Have you seen this uh, flow before? Yeah. This is the yeah, I, uh, card. Sorry. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Do you want to just explain to me what what the two sides are? This is the most common one. No. The madam, I explained to. Sorry. Can you explain it? No. Yes. Okay. Okay. Right. Yes. Of course. So this is when we go to pay with a card, right? Now every now we all know that. We all we have all now by now paid with a card. So uh, we there is a POS machine. You've seen the POS machine. So what we do is the POS machine is with the merchant, right? So the merchant is here. And so these smaller arrows are the messages, right? So what we have to remember is in payments, um, what we are basically talking about is messaging, right? When we talk about cashless payments. We are talking about messages, right? They are messages that are, they are electronic messages, uh, digitally digitalized messages that are going through. There is no actual money in that. For that transaction to be complete, there is no physical money moving, right? At the end of the day, uh, the banks might, you know, within their central bank accounts, you know, they will tally their cash balances, but the that particular transaction will have no physical cash being moved, right? So these are all messages that are going up and down. And then first you have the message flow itself for the transaction, right? So those are the, the blue and the yellow uh, orange flows are for the, are the message about whether the, the funds are available, right? And then the green, the big green ones are where the fund the messages regarding the fund flow are going right so um so in the in the standard traditional post payment uh, we enter the card and when we when we insert the card the message goes to the acquiring bank right so the acquiring bank is the card is the merchant's bank that acquires that accepts the payment from that machine right so not everyone is an acquiring bank you have to get your license to become an acquirer right so you acquire that, that this is a basically a technological relationship right you acquire it and you're when you're acquiring it what you're doing is you're checking okay what is the network right you check what the network is and then you send it now it could be visa master now when we have the common pass there is a way with the numbers that you can distinguish and then it goes to the relevant card network right so then the card network is the one that is actually sending the message so card schemes are sending the message they check the the credentials of the card and then they the expiry and the authentic authenticity of the card and then they will go and the message goes to the card uh, the uh, the bank that issued the card right so the bank that issued the card and the bank that acquired the card are not always the same so if it's the bank that acquired the card that has also issued the card do you know the type of transaction uh, dila what you call it if the acquirer and the issuer are the same bank 
there's a word for the transaction. It's called an on us transaction, right? If it is, uh, and the opposite is not ours, right? Or then, um, then what happens is now that that is the point when there is an actual interbank transaction. And most of the time, you'll notice we are studying interbank payment systems because if it is within the same bank, uh, the uh, the, the the complexity and all of that is less because it is within your system, right? It is only when you have to go outside your banking system that most of these messaging and complexity starts coming, right? So then the issuing bank says, okay, they check the card details and then they access. So we in the, in the very early early uh, lectures when we were talking payment instruments, uh, I highlighted this point, right? Cards are basically ways to access your bank account, right? It's it's a way to tell someone, look here, I have some money in my bank account. You can access it and take this particular amount. That is your card. That is the message that you're basically sending. It. It's like a key. You, know, you say, okay, here's the key to my, uh, my vault. You can open it and take 500 rupees. So it's it, in another way, it, this is, so the card is, kind of a version of a key that right? you're telling or you're giving the bank an instruction saying, okay, here I have sent this message, please release 500 rupees, right? So the issuing bank, we now check, does this person have 500 rupees? Is this person the right person? That's why you have the verifications. And then, uh, and all this happen, happens really fast. And then the message comes back. Uh, and if that person has the, if it's a yes, no, uh, the message comes back. So sometimes we find that the slip comes out and sometimes the slip comes out saying uh, payment declined, right? So that is the funds are not there. So these happen within a very short, within a few seconds, this whole transaction happened. Now this is the traditional card payment uh, method at a, at, at, at a POS level, right? And this has been going on for decades now. Right? So this is the standard one. But the fund flow happens separately. Now all this happens, but at that exact, at that precise time, the funds don't flow out of our account. The, the bank will block that fund from our account, so we can't use it. But the bank only later sends the funds to the acquiring bank, which is the merchant's bank, right? So, and then the merchant can take the money out if they want. Right, the uh, and it gets posted to the sorry after it goes to the acquiring bank, it's posted to the merchant's account, and then the merchant can take the money. Right, but that is a separate message flow. Right, so this is the traditional what we can now call. I'm sure uh, at when these were introduced, they were um, sort of novel, modern ways of paying, but now they have become fairly traditional ways of paying. Right? Um, was that clear, uh, Dilan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. If you have any questions, just ask. Um, then we have with fintech, right? Now, what happens here? Now we have gotten rid of the card and the POS machine, right? And we don't need to use it anymore, right? What is the fintech? Right, so this fintech basically is, let's see, I think I can make this bigger. Here we are. Uh, so this fintech is basically, uh, now the app, you can store your card in your app. And if you have NFC, like Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, um, then you can just, without inserting your card, you can just pay from your phone. Now, why, why is this the fintech, right? Now, the authentication, the typing of the numbers, the inserting of the card, all that has now been taken off. The carrying of the card, we don't even need to carry the card, right? So all those things that we needed to do, or we don't have to do anymore. We just need our phone and we need our finger to authenticate, right? To, uh, to, to, uh, to give our fingerprint. And that's it. So one step, has now disappeared, right? And 
so from the customer perspective um there is uh, they don't have to sort of be taking their wallets and taking out the card and punching number this is uh, the example is where there's chip and pin uh and now that that has gone right so that now it is gotten simplified for the customer and you don't have to worry about uh, card theft because you're not using your card and you have to use your biometrics right so someone can't sort of you know steal sign on your behalf or someone can't you know find out your pin and then use your card uh, because you need your fingerprint right uh, to verify so um to authenticate sorry and uh, yeah so this is uh, and this we this part of we already have the technology the interface to connect right the post machine is that interface right right now in physical sales still it's the post machine right even if we take the qr code uh, we have the we have the card the printed card but we also have post machines right post machines have been sort of very uh, very versatile and they have been evolving so they are pretty old right the post machine technology per se is pretty old it's it's been around as long as cards but uh, they have evolved to to uh, to include new technologies like nfc and and they are still relevant right they have not been chucked out as yet we now see smaller smaller uh, post machines but they are, they are still post machines right they are still the interface to um, connect between the card and the bank right but what we what are we seeing here now the card the plastic card has also disappeared right we don't need the plastic card also right uh, so the the issue could be you know if you're in a pla if you're in uh, 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 the business of manufacturing these plastic payment cards then this is a problem right you i mean still there are all the cards are issued as plastic almost all the cards there are now virtual cards being issued so which means your business is getting disrupted right like uh, someone is there is competition and your your having problems in um your market is going down because the demand is going down uh, but on the other hand if you are a payment app a mobile payment app that that uh, has the ability to have store the card details and process payments then your market share is going up right so it's, you have to evolve we have to know realize that things change nothing is permanent right so things are always changing um and today this is what we consider fintech right um so this would be in this model this would be the fintech that is coming in this is all the traditional part this has not changed right so this has changed this is now the card has now disappeared the punching of the fingers or the uh, the signature the process has changed but the back end is still the same right the back end has not significantly changed there might be they might have new technologies here they might have new technologies here, but the 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 process is the back end process has not changed that's the, this is what i said when we are evolving not everything evolves right things that are working well uh, sometimes because of risks sometimes because of costs they might just be kept as is right um so that is shopping with a card right so now we have shopping online so the traditional way right so when we are shopping online we have the the similar to the pos here is the internet payment gateway right now because there is no physical store we have to go to an online store right so it could be kaprook uh, amazon ebay um, there are so many in wow.lk um, almost all the kiosks car these are all online stores right um so we go to the online store and then we come to the point of the payment right and 
the the interface that connects the the technology that connects the bank and the merchant online like the post machine connects the card provides an interface to connect to the bank the internet payment gateway provides the interface uh, for the online payment right now the internet payment gateway is provided by the acquiring bank right uh, and uh, they get the 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 in sri lanka we have to give approval for them to have an uh, internet payment gateway and there are a lot of rules that come with it uh, who can how can you give someone uh, access uh, to an ipg and there are all these rules but we will notice that the flow of this and this is pretty much the same right you have this is the online so so if i here if i added a little shop let's say i brought this guy here and put another layer uh, like a physical shop and, uh, it is the same right so then the messages once the inter from the internet payment gateway uh, the message flow is the same from the acquiring bank it goes through the card network to the issuing bank and the issuing bank lets the acquiring bank know whether there is sufficient funds, right? And then, of course, there are uh, two-factor authentication and uh, it will go into the bank's, uh, it will go into the bank's page and there are all these, these are actually, there are rules right now to ensure that the payment is, the online payment is safe, right? And that there aren't any frauds. That's why we have mandated uh, two-factor authentication or TPs um, for the acquirer um, to to ensure that the payment online the online payment is safe right but those are all practical rules that are getting introduced as uh, through practice right so when we feel okay fraud is increasing then you know a lot of people are using uh, fraudulent cards or there are scams then we introduce these rules like two-factor authentication, SMS alert, you know, the OTPs, all these are getting added to improve the situation. But the concept remains the same. And the IPG and the POS pretty much serve the same purpose, right? But we, can't, we, can, we can't have a POS when we are paying on time because in our houses, we can't have little POSs, right? But uh, instead of the POS, we have the IPG. Now, this is the traditional one. So if you took it from many 10 years ago, 20 years ago, if you shopped online, this is pretty much how it works, right? And then in the IPG, we enter our card details and we process it, right? Now, in the FinTech. Now, what is the difference here? We have a payment service provider right and suddenly we now we can add not only from the merchant store from the mobile app also we can shop right not only from the computer now fast forward right the mobile app also we can uh, we can uh, shop now suddenly there is this new guy here the payment service provider now who is the payment service provider the payment service provider is can is, is a is a is a is a company or a firm or an entity a tech it's basically tech it performs primarily a technological function right now you will remember i said not everyone can get an ipg it's not easy not every acquiring bank can get an ipg uh and also not every merchant can get that IPG connection because the bank has to make sure that this merchant meets the requirements, um, the technological financial requirements to ensure that they can handle this traffic that comes through the IPG, right? So what the payment service provider does is if they create a platform and they say, hey, you know, if you are too small, if you don't have enough funds to have to be qualified to get an IPG on your own, we you can come to us for a lower fee. For a simpler model, we will 
we will create we have this platform you can even we will even host your website if you like right and sometimes from your website you, you will get connected to people like webex pay pay here right now those are payment service providers under the regulation they are platforms we pay their payment platforms that enable merchants to connect to an ipg via them right now what do they do now they solve a problem now they on one side there are these merchants who don't have the wherewithal to to handle an ipg on the other side the acquiring banks also can't risk though they want to have these merchants they don't want to take this risk right and they are talk about many many small merchants but the payments are is provide now that is their only job so they can focus on this and ensure that there is a fair deal so that these the small merchants get a chance to come online and the acquiring bank doesn't have the risk so they absorb this risk right and so this new person this new person who simplifies this process right now to the customer the customer can see now here the fintech the customer can see the customer is the one who's using this fintech here it is not the customer the customer can see this i mean we might see the pay here logo apex but it is unimportant to us it's not important because we are still either paying from card or uh, depending on the app if it's connected to the bank account or whatever but still it is it is uh, it's going through the same process but to the merchant and the bank there is a benefit so the fintech is not only for the customers uh, the customer end of the uh, of the process no is it only at the bank and it can be at any level but what we are seeing is most of the time these fintechs are coming further it's on this end right it's lesser on this end on this end there are fintechs every day is moved to uh, cloud services there are third party aggregator services and they are joining uh joining uh, cloud services but more or less there are this lot of the fintechs lot of the fintechs are on the retail side right it's on it's for small time it's for it's for it, when we say retail side it's for it is for retail uh, values individual customers and a lot of the smaller merchants who can't um, afford uh, the the investment required for ipgs and similar technology right um now if even if you take the lanka qr uh, you have uh, the post machine and you also have the printed card right so on the printed card the printed card is there because any merchant they don't need to make any investment at all the bank will just give them the sticker and that is all they have to use so very very low cost uh, access point now the qr is also an interface right it is an interface like the card it performs a very similar uh, very similar uh, uh, role as the card the card is an interface to our account the qr is also providing an interface between the merchant and our bank right so we are from when we scan the qr code our the the merchant's name falls and when we can say okay send money to this person right um so this is this new addition these are things that you can see as fintech they are new they are new players they are new functions now even a traditional player can have a payment service providing a platform right that there's, there's, there's nothing stopping them but we often find that there are there these are generally tech companies that come with these solutions they have people with banking experience and they provide a service to banks and to merchants right and this is how they add value when they create new business model model so the payment value process has now changed now there is a new person here but overall there is because there can be more volume uh, there is more return right so um why do we need to add a new layer of fintech uh because what we just discussed now the payment service provider 
reduce reduces costs right it changes your business model and it makes it much easier it makes it much easier for the uh, merchants to join right because uh, the complexities that they have to go uh, when uh, when they need to join a bank uh, get the ipg directly from the bank is becomes less of course under the sri lankan regulations your relationship as a merchant is still with your bank right you are still the, the acquiring bank is is the, your, that is where your relationship your relationship is not with the ipg the ipg sorry the payment service provider the payment service provider only addresses tech related issues right or administrative issues but not the regulatory requirement of you having to be an approved merchant with the acquiring bank right so it's because for aim uh, for uh, aml cft that is fiu related regulations to prevent the misuse of funds right the payment service provider is only sending the message that's why here you find it is the message flow that is going through these new parties the funds are not the funds are going between banks and to the merchants bank right it is not going to the payment service provider the payment service provider is not holding any funds right they 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 are just sending the message right and they can't uh, they can't just get customers merchants on board as well it is through the bank that they can get the merchants so they can't just register people or uh, this is also for aml cft first process okay um any questions so far any questions no uh, we have a new uh, member kavindra hello mm is line everything clear yeah madam clear mm. uh, kavindra uh, sorry yes dilan yeah, yeah madam can you can you give a example to that service provider uh, this one this one yeah yeah so then uh, if you have uh, lanka we, we sometimes when you go to pay in some of the websites you will see webex pay coming the, the 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 you know the place where we type the card details you, you will see webex pay or pay here powered by pay here or something like that right now yeah. that's what i'm saying now customer can't see so the customer can't really distinguish because it is not for the customer it is for the merchant right so when uh, if uh, now in, if the, if you have an if you are an acquiring bank you will know this because webex pay or we here will come to you and uh, say okay we want to be uh, be a payment service provider and they will have a uh they will have a um, relationship with the bank right so when you are when you are paying uh, if you are pay, do you pay on do you buy things online uh yeah da, right. daras so, like daras yeah i daras uh, doesn't daras uses its own ipg it doesn't have it doesn't use uh, a platform uh so that's the thing so if most of the big places like places like daras kapruka they uh, kapruka has uh, paypal they give enable paper but they also have their own ipg so you most of these big places they will have their own, they will directly have a relationship with the acquiring bank because they are they are they have they have high investments uh, so they they can easily get the ipg connection from the acquiring bank it is for those who don't now if you take things like daras they are 
when Daras came to Sri Lanka itself, it is or it was already a successful Chinese venture, right? So they are a website company and they have all the requirements. But if you are a new merchant, right, like you're a small time merchant who is now trying to go for website uh, to have a website and have online payments, then only you will need uh, a third party to help you out right because it's not immediately easy for you to go and have that relationship with the bank and do the necessary developments to to get a ipg and all of that from your end so it's much easier if the third party comes to help you so if you are paying from sort of smaller if you're buying from smaller um, companies online you will see sometimes you know webex pay that the screen will appear and it will say Webex pay somewhere or the screen will appear and they will say pay here somewhere. So they, they, that way you will, uh, you can see this. That is the that is the only examples that I can give. So it is only through shopping and just keeping your eyes open. Sometimes you might not notice. You, you might have already used this. Um, you might not have noticed. Uh, another common uh, uh, payment service provider is PayPal. Now, if you buy on uh, abroad, uh, the PayPal interface itself allows you to enter your card details as well. And so they are doing, giving that service, right? You can also directly pay from your PayPal account. Uh, so they give the, both services are available. Um, so that is, so those are the, let me just see, let's just quickly, to see if we can go to a Sri Lanka. Let's see the Taipei here. Let's see whether they are. Can you see my screen? No, not it's uh, with me. No, only slide. Sorry? I can see only, um, I can see only slide, not uh, share the screen. Ah, okay. With, with me, yeah. Uh, can you see the web page that I'm on? No. No, 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 no. Okay. Let's see. Share. Let's see. Let's, I'll just stop presenting and start an entire screen. Okay. Right. So if we go to now, yeah. if we if no, you no, go see. to pay here, okay, right. So you know when you go to pay here, right? Uh -huh. So they will have all these. Sri Lanka is uh, now they are saying right that uh, Sri Lanka is the first approved aggregate internet payment service provider and it's accepting uh, online payments all these things are there now here they are they have all these things here pay here plugins right now if you want to plug into your shopping cart right now when you're using these things only you can see them right the checkout API now this is now they are telling all these information is there. Now people can directly start using this. The software developers can go through these and they can see what they have to do, right? Now all this information is there. Let's um, let's see whether they have any uh, demonstrations. Mm. I get to the pay here at home. Okay. Uh. Here we are. Let's just watch this. Then they will it might help you.
So, now you can see here now they are showing that they are connected with all these. So, from that, so from that platform, you can connect to Freemi, Mcash, Easy Cash, Genie, uh, Visa, Amex, all of that. You can Sampath Vishwa, all of that. You can connect from that platform, right? So it's a platform. A platform is basically something that it enables other things to connect to you, right? When we are uh, when we are having a platform, that is what it means. It's helping. Uh, it it's a sort of a digital. Uh, uh, sort of, I suppose you can call it an interface where other systems can also connect in, right? So this is what it does. It's a platform. Uh, it was that helpful in any way, uh, Dila? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's clear, go. clear, clear. Thank you. Yeah. Um, or oral play, oral play also like. So oral play is uh, not a, a platform. Um, it's a mobile payment app. Yeah. Right. It's a mobile payment app, and uh, and um, uh, so oral play, free me, uh, I pay. Those are all uh, payment apps. So you download the app to your phone. And then from your app, you can pay, uh, if you go to the merchant, you can pay at the merchant. Now, you saw this page, they had the Freemi logo. So you can directly pay through Freemi uh, uh, from, uh, the, from the website itself, right? Uh, so Oral Pay also, they will have different features like that each each payment app will have its own features. Then you have money transferring, you can directly transfer money and so on and so forth. But they are, it's an app, right? Yeah, right. Well, it's in the mobile phone. Whereas the payment uh, service provider, the platform is not an app, right? It is for the merchant. Now, if you noticed the, what the founder was saying, he's saying for any businesses, he's not talking for Merchant uh, for customers. He is not talking about us. He is talking about businesses because it is to connect businesses and the banks. That's what he was saying. Now he was saying. Now now I have now we have developed it so any uh, business can connect to any bank, right? So that means they have gone and created relationships with all the banks so that they can uh, they can connect to the IPGs of all the banks, right? Uh, so this is uh, the fintech that is happening not at customer level but the next level which is the business and the bank right so this is why this uh, this diagram where i drew this diagram so that you can see this here is also fintech here now this is for the customer now oral pay is for the customer now oral pay is something like this now if we just let me make this bigger. Right. So, uh, Oral Pay is, uh, I don't know whether Oral Pay has NFC, I don't think so. I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, you can definitely pay at the POS level, you can pay with your Oral Pay, right? Uh, if you go to the Oral Pay shop for the, I think it's orange, and then you can pay there with your phone, right? So, that is. A fintech now this with oral pay you don't need to use this you can definitely directly you meaning the customer right now we are talking about the customer this guy not the bank the bank is here the relationship with the bank has not changed still from the post machine it is going to the bank right and um, the here the fintech is for the retail customer And here the fintech is for the merchant. Now we can one by one we can keep going. There are examples. Okay, where it is for the bank, where it is for the issuing bank, where it is for the uh, where it is for the card payment, where it is for the uh, payment infrastructure. So at different levels we find the what the point is that 
some complexity or some difficulty you know like small merchants not being able to afford ipg connection uh that difficulty has been addressed by a third party now without this payment service provider also this system can work because the bank is already providing this service right the ipg first link is the bank has to provide this link right so the bank is already providing this interface so if you can afford it you can directly come here that is the traditional way but when you can't when that means there is some problem the market there is a crowd who has a demand but they can't afford it they can't there is a demand supply mismatch to fix that demand supply mismatch these people have come in to intermediate the situation right and here now there are issues if people don't like to carry cards people are now pay, people get, get their cards stolen and then frauds happen now all that can be fixed if you have a biometric form with nfc right and that is another demand in the market that has been now fixed by a third party coming the bank this technology is not Deve is not developed by bank it is developed by a tech company right they have provided a solution and now that the the inefficiency in that market the friction the problem in that market has now been smoothed out and that is what fintech does right right uh it's 7 30 let's take about a 10 minute break if you don't mind um no. Oh, okay, madam. Right. Uh, what I'll do is I was going to go into a more sort of theoretical uh, sort of what is innovation and you know some theory, but I will. Uh, I think I will. Let me just include. I'll just see what other examples of fintech I can include because this is very important for bankers. You know, bankers need to be able to distinguish what is fintech what are we generally doing what not not normal database management is not fintech you know just because you introduce a new database management system it's not necessarily fintech it is doing the incremental changes in your day-to-day -day things you know you have to do up, do upgrades patches and all of those things so uh, even if you're co-banking if it's doing exactly what it was doing before but with more sort of flexible things it, there might not there might be there will be innovation but it won't be fintech right it will be fintech if you have some some new system that you have uh, introduced that will make some problem some inefficiency go away right and then you have used some fintech solution Right, so that is, I, I, I'll let me just see if I can pop something is in the middle, I will do that and I can probably explain it a bit more. Okay, let's come back in 10 minutes then. Hi, welcome back. Um, so, um, did I just added some more uh, diagrams so that I can just teach, uh, show how, how FinTech is, we have a new Isibara has also joined. So what we are doing right now is um, we learn, we were talking about how to distinguish fintech. And uh, so how do we, what is the difference between traditional tech and fintech? Like, how do we distinguish what fintech is? How can we say something is fintech? And uh, something is not, uh, it was what was always there and just uh, something new, right? So remember with time, what we are calling FinTech today might become legacy and there will be new FinTechs, right? So, so remember it's a process, right? Um, so yeah, so I added, so we were looking at uh, the payment service provider. So this is the customer end. So then, so now this is sort of going now we're going further into the payment value chain right uh, now these now when these are done 
right? These companies are called fintechs. They are, they are, in the last lecture, we talked about this. They are called fintechs, right? They are technology companies with, uh, they have staff who are banks, or they are even from the banks, you know, some banks have their own IT sort of um, subsidiaries and they are focused more on tech. So then they're more tech in, uh, focused and they will have some, uh, they, they will benefit from the banking experience of their colleagues. Um, and, but they are not uh, pure banks, right? Uh, no, are they pure technology companies, right? They, they have to cross pollinate, right? They have to bring in knowledge from both sides to make something FinTech, right? Because you have to understand what is the existing problem in the process, what is the existing problem in the market, in financial services that can be solved with technology, right? Now payments, uh, uh, payment service provider is a payment platform, right? So for platforms are, is, a, is a technology, is a digital technology solution. You have music platforms, you have educational platforms, you can have so many types of platforms. But uh, now if you take the Apple iStore or the Google Play Store, those are platforms, right? Those are platforms where any other app developer, any other company can develop an app and come in sort of stick it on that and they so they provide some you know like plug points uh, you know you can you can uh, you can connect to that and then you reach an entire market right so the same way these payment uh, platforms they provide some uh, base for merchants to either have their websites or to have the payment plugin because uh, you can have any amount of products in your website with prices but the moment you have to pay for it you are hit with regulations and compliance requirements uh security requirements and all that so most merchants can't handle that alone right that's why banks have something called ipg separately and these problems to solve these problems only the payment service providers come in right um, so now going back into the, so these diagrams I showed in the very early lectures when I was introducing uh, payment systems, but now let's come back to them and see why we are, we are now studying them as fintech, right? Because they are, they are the more backend fintechs. The fintech now, even the pay here, the web XP, we don't see, right? Uh, we might not notice, but the paying with the Lanka QR with the mobile app, the customer sees, the customer is directly involved. Now, now we are going further back into the, into the payment chain, right? Now here, this is the national card scheme, right? So the national card scheme, if you recall, uh, it is a locally routed card, right? We launched it in uh, the third quarter of 2019. Um, so what the reason that it was launched was because now let's go here. Here we are. The card network, right? Now the card network, these card networks are Visa master generally. And they are international card schemes and every message gets routed out. And we discussed this and one of our colleagues um, uh, even made a presentation on this. The, the messages have to go out and every time it goes out, there is a foreign exchange payment, right? Um, but then we decided, okay, look here, we can route the rupee transactions locally, right? So here it is, instead of, now we have partnered with JCB, JCP is like Visa and Master, right? But only for overseas transactions. So Lanka, through the Lanka Pay CCAPS uh, process, the common mobile, the uh, common POS was introduced, right? And the common POS, the local rupee transactions get routed locally so instead of the normal process of the acquiring bank and going into the 
Visa MasterCard scheme process, it's coming to the local Lanka Clear interbank clearing system, right? So the card is the interface, right? The card is the interface and it is directly hitting the Lanka Pay infrastructure, right? And so it will determine is it a rupee transaction or not? And then from that, it will decide, okay, am I going to the Lanka Pay system? Am I going to the local system, right? So if you go abroad, it will hit the JCB uh, network, right? It won't hit the Lanka Pay network. Uh, if it is uh, coming through uh, the, coming locally, it directly hits the Lanka Pay, right? Which is the Lanka Clear brand, right? So, so if this is the local transaction and the message is coming and the payment flow, right? So it's going this way. And here it hits the JCB network first. Now this is what we can call FinTech, right? But at an infrastructure level. And the customers don't see this, right? Only we only it really matters to the banks that have to pay that extra fees to JCP or Visa Master, right? To the customer, it doesn't matter. But to the acquire, but to the merchant, it matters because when it goes through Lanka Pay, their MDR is less because the Lanka Pay uh, cost is less, right? So uh, it has an impact on the uh, merchant at a business model level, right? Your your fees lessens, right? And it's just completely, and for the banks also, the whole thing is going through the Lanka Clear system, which, which makes it far more efficient, right? Um, so that is one type of more internal, I mean, the pro payment process. Now we are going further and further inside where customers and even bank front staff can't see, right? Front desk staff can't see. There are, these are things that are happening at the back end. Um, another uh, way, right? Now we talked about paying with the card. Now all this we are paying with the card, right? Now paying with the bank, directly from the bank account. Right now we know SEF allows interbank transfer. All these um, all these uh, payment apps are providing interbank transfers through SEFT, right? So very easy. Just put in on the person's um, account details and it goes. But when we are paying, when we are paying at a shop, we don't do safe transfers. We don't ask the merchant, can you, can you please give me your uh, uh, bank account details? I will transfer you money from the bank to from my bank account to no. And then if we go to pay like that, then it will be a real mess and everyone will be waiting in queues. Just pay is made, is is developed from SIFTs, right? It is developed from SEFs, the interbank real-time transaction uh, transfer, but it is made specifically for payments, right? It is made for mobile app payments. It is with just pay only. We pay with all pay. pay uh, all these uh, free me or all, all these payment apps are just pay enabled, right? So why are we? Uh, using just pay and not normal sets because just pay has been if you the the early example I gave of the London underground uh, train stations right where as we are walking we touch the bank card the debit or credit card and it opens that means the payment is processing that fast right we don't even have to 
stop to touch it. It just as we are walking, we can touch it and go. And the payment has been processed, right? The money has been uh, the it has checked with the uh, with the uh, the verification authentication. All those has been done. The money uh, the checking of whether the uh, funds are there has been done, and the funds have been blocked from our account. Right? All that has happened while we are walking. Right, so it's that fast. So, just pay is also something that has been op op is a system that has been optimized for that speed. So, when a merchant app has just pay, while the SMS alerts are all uh, mandated, the speed is not right. So, in just pay, the speed is mandated. When you are using just pay, there is a uh, maximum time a delay that so within a few seconds the message has to come to the merchant otherwise the merchant will be waiting without knowing whether the payment has come through and then that will cause another problem in the queues right so very quickly the just pay message has to come back and Lanka Clear is always trying to make this faster and faster right so that the payment happens seamlessly it happens really fast now this is a fintech an infrastructure level fintech and so CIFs has been developed to enable it to be connected as for pure payments uh, through the mobile phone practically what happens is it's going from the customer's bank account to the merchant's bank right that is what is practically happening that normal self transfer is what is happening but the way that it is happening instead of us having to type our entire bank account details just you know from the mobile number or like a qr or nfc whichever method we can directly pay through using the just pay technology right so that is a fintech now the, the ordinary process has been completely replaced. Now, in this example, we saw the mobile app, the card has been, the card is still there, right? The card is still there in the mobile app, right? If you take this also, here the card is there, the Visa Master uh, card has been included, right? But here, there is no card involved. It's direct CASA, right? CASA is current account and savings account. So direct CASA, the card has is gone. The POS is, it might, it might not be there. If it's NFC, it could, there could be a POS. The POS also can be illuminated. Just with the phone, with the payment app, you can pay, right? So that, those are different examples of how, what is FinTech now? The the usual, the initial trans, transfer mechanism is still there. SEFS is there. The interbank transfer system is there. But built on that to, to streamline and make the payment process more efficient, they have developed it for mobile apps. So the customer, the merchant, the bank, all benefit from it how does the customer benefit the customer benefits because they don't need to pay from their card they don't need to carry their cards or anything like that directly from their bank account they can pay right the merchant also gets money very fast right they don't have to wait for days because it is an interbank transaction right there is no cost as such as there is the cost that you for the for their service but not the mdrs as such but of course on Lanka QR, there is an mdr right uh, and for the for just pay payments, the customer is not paying. Then for the bank also, going through the Lanka Clear system, no delays, the money gets transferred end of the day, right? So it is a win-win for a lot of for all parties included, right? So this is fintech. This is sort of going forward, finding new business models, new relationships. These are using the existing technologies. Nothing, no, there, of course, there are new technological developments, but these are SEFs is existing, mobile phone is existing, banks are existing, all these things are existing. With that, they are 
recombining it to see how we can improve the situation. Right? Um, do we have? And another one like this is Lanka online payment platform, um, which we call Elpop. Uh, have you heard of Elpop, uh, Lanka online payment platform? Anyone here? Yeah, madam. So you have? I hear. Yeah, I hear. Okay, so um, Lanka, uh, on Lanka Pay online payment platform is mainly targeting government institutions that require customers to pay. So those days when we go, used to have to pay like our customs or tax, uh, many, many organizations have joined uh, Lanka uh, Elpa. We would, you know, we would have to generally for those you know, even still that facility is available. You go to you know the like it's IRD. You have the Bank of Ceylon slip. You know still when they are sending the tax returns, they are sending the Bank of Ceylon slip uh, for us to fill and deposit. Right. Um, then we saw last year also um, IRD enable safe transfers, right? They gave their bank account numbers and told people do safe transfers. But uh, now there is LPOP transfers, right? No, you don't have to do that also. You just, when you're, you go to your bank account, you just click and then there's a drop down list from, the, they say I pay IRB. Directly you are getting connected to IRB. And the first a uh, government institution that joined Elpop is Sri Lanka Customs because they have a lot of payments on a daily basis and you know it's cumbersome you know reconciling with the paper and all of that so um, this was the first online payment platform that happened and most banks are there you just have to go and there's a drop down and then you can make the customer customs payment so that entire complexity of starting from having to go to the bank and pay the forms uh, to even you know put in the customs account number or anything like that directly you can just pay from your bank account and that's it right so these are fintechs where where that the because remember the core system has not changed the interbank transfer infrastructure has not changed, right? Like we're still going through Lanka Clear. There is a there is a clearance in a clearing involved, and there is deferred settlement, and all of that is happening at the back end. But for the customer now, very easy to pay. They just go drop down list, select customs, and they put all the relevant uh, details, and just press enter. And it's gone, right? So this is how we use technology, the the flexibility, the, the sort of the, um, the the characteristics of technology, which is that it, they can be connected to different systems, right? You can connect different, different systems together. You can bring in speed. You can miss some steps, right? Some manual steps that you want to do, you can quickly sort of cover up and do it with uh, technology. Now, for instance, where we don't need to put uh, uh, the bank account number, we can just check, right? And uh, instead, yeah, we, we just have a small interface. Now, we don't have to fill all these names, all of that, we don't have to do it. We just have this small interface to fill the relevant details and it's just gone. Right. So it has made it easy for customers to pay and payments are also high and the custom, I think customs have gone completely digital now, right? And they are using LPOP fully. So uh, these, this is how we bring in FinTech into the backend, right? So the customer can see this screen, but they might or might not know that they are LPOP, but the backend, it is a very important FinTech developer. Right. So, why are we having this new layer? What we discussed because that having that 
near fintech it could be the payment service provider it could be a platform it could be something like just pay this pay is not there is no payment service provider it is a technology right it is a technological development of from the sifts platform so these are newly inserted into the value chain and when you do that the complexity reduces to at least one part it could be the merchant it could be the customer it could be the bank to some person or sometimes all right that complexity reduces or some let's say we wanted to do uh, aml cft related uh, regulation now the biometric right with the card there is chip and pin then there, there first there was signature and then there is chip and pin and then there is biometrics now biometrics is considered the most advanced so you can automatically now the phone already has the biometrics capability it was not create the biometric capability was not introduced to the phone for people to perform uh, to make payments it was for the phone's own security right because the phone itself became a very important device that needed blocking right so uh, instead of putting passwords they they developed the thumbprint right and now with that existing thumbprint technology we are using it to authenticate them right so the existing technologies therefore in anywhere it can happen but when you use those technologies to develop something new to innovate something new that is when something becomes a fintech right Oh, we are time. We have twenty minutes. Um, any questions? Any questions? No questions. Okay. So. Um, Now we've been talking about fintech all this time. Then now the question is, um, what are fin? Why why are we bothering so much about fintech? Now we talked a lot about convenience, right? But it has bigger bigger impact, right? Hmm. um now i have been talking about i've been using these terms like you know smaller merchants uh, retail customers um more businesses um and so the trend that is going on is that we are the flow is that we are talking about small time we are not talking about big companies who can afford big infrastructures um that's why the conversation is less about banks um so lot of what fintech has been doing is to target the smaller groups right because there are a lot the smaller groups have low value transactions but they are high in volume there are many of them so fintech has really helped to reach out and we discussed this earlier for with the mobile phone right people started getting the mobile phone into their hands if they were cheap they were easy to get the people took the mobile phone for communication right not for financial services people bought mobile phones to call people and contact people not to not to do their banking with the mobile phone that was not why people bought mobile phones but again the innovation came because that existing technology we were able to use for financial services and fintech like Uh, mobile money you know things like easy easy cash in cash you know they started in africa with mpesa um 
they what they showed was with fintechs combining financial services and technology it creates an opportunity for inclusive growth right so there is if you go to world bank sites ebb sites there there are entire sections dedicated for this in, including uh, inclusive growth right and then increased market competition now why is this increased market competition increased market competition is when the you know you may have heard the term entry barriers and we have discussed this in entry barriers in earlier lectures entry barriers can be uh, regulatory entry barriers where they say okay you have to be um, Uh, you must be a company with 20 million capital and you know you must have a, you must have a uh, office um you must comply to all these capital requirements um uh, your directors must be like this and all of that those are regulatory requirements barriers right to entry and sometimes a regulator could uh, could uh control the number of entrants right so for instance you want see uh, there there will be a cap of licenses given right because you don't want to pack up the market uh but in that process a lot of people who can probably contribute to the market and provide good service to the consumers might not be able to enter right and um but what fintech has done is because of technology because of the mobile phone because of internet because it is so easy to uh, uh, develop apps these days um it has increased the market competition right so banks have had to wake up because there are third parties who are some of them who are creating new markets for them like the payment platforms and like this payment platform is not holding money or anything like that it is uh directly it is just extending the banks access channels right so it is taking it to more um merchants and customers but there are those who will challenge right a good example is um, remittances remittances interbank uh In, in for international fund transfers are really expensive right we all know this we put 100 dollars and we are not sure at the other end how much the person is going to get uh, because of fees so with fintech with these uh, with the internet right and uh, banks also change in their technologies and having more sort of interoperable systems a uh, lot of companies you know companies like transferwise revolut there are a lot of international remittance fintechs right and banks have had to seriously rethink what they are remit- because they earn a lot from remittances but if people if normal people who want to transfer money you know their earnings to their families abroad you know in another country and if they're not coming into the banking structure right that's a problem now an interesting model is uh, companies like transferwise they use the net aim model uh, what they do is uh, they have accounts in every country and they will move money they, the customers will top up their the transferwise accounts and then um, the transferwise will net out the um, obligations between at a country level right so but and and it the fees is really low to the extent that you know it has really hit the paid banks in the uh, remittance markets right then we have inclusive growth uh, we have financial inclusion right financial inclusion means now mostly i think less for sri lanka but globally uh, especially in large countries like african countries india where banks um don't reach a lot of the communities having the mobile phone and having technologies that can connect to banks 
uh, have increased financial inclusion where people in the peripheries have been able to access financial services through technological devices, especially the mobile phone, right? So that is uh, one of the benefits, another benefit, right? And then we have reduction of transaction costs. Reduction of transaction costs is generally, it can go in many ways. Sometimes when you reduce intermediaries, that is middlemen, right? The cost of the transaction goes down. But also with technology, we can make certain savings, right? So uh, the manual processes, the, the checking that has to be done, but when they're automated, uh, those processes um, then reduce the overall costs of doing a transaction, right? Of course, the word transaction has, is, is it's a theoretical term. It's got a the sort of a wider meaning, but I will sort of use it in its um, simple sense, right? Um, so this, the lot of the friction in the market, that happens due to pricing and fees, all of those are getting eliminated because of fintechs, right? Because fintechs use technology to find shortcuts, more clever uh, models that uh, the traditional manual models have can't do. And using those technologies, they are able to provide High, uh, reduced transaction costs. And then expansion of financial services. This is very important, right? And we, in the next uh, lectures, we will discuss uh, the other areas. We, we uh, in this, in the last lecture, I gave a whole list of fintechs. So things like open banking. Um, now, they, oh, open banking, open APIs, even these fintechs, you know, the, the the way that they take the existing data because they are technologies they they view this in a different way right now things like budgeting apps they are very very famous they they access through open APS they will access the the bank account details with the customer's consent and budget for the customer right it's very they are very popular and then um, you have um, investment apps. Uh, then you have the normal payment apps. And you have uh, new services that weren't taking place before, like crowdfunding, crowd lending. All these are new services, right? Like conceptually, they are old, right? Um, but through technology, they have been able to come in to the mainstream, right? And this is how, fine. so financial services, you know, if you went to a bank, even 10, 15 years ago, what the bank offered and now what the bank can offer through their digital platforms itself are so much more. So these are some of the benefits of FinTech. There are many. Um, and if you have time, read through these uh, to see how, how technology is changing financial services. That's really important. Um, are there any questions so far? I was going to have to take a break, but I, what I did was I added some uh, sections here. Um, are there any questions? Oh, the next one is, I think I better do this next time, simply because it's kind of, I think, you shouldn't be tired when we are learning this. So I, if there are, oh, are there any questions uh, for what we did so far? No. Um, right. So if there are no questions, let's end it here and we'll come back next. It is next. Yeah, I should be able to. Oh, uh, next.
Thursday. I'll have a chat to see whether we can do a Thursday lecture as well. Um, because we've been cancelling two uh, four hour lectures and we are our addition is two hours, so we're kind of falling behind. Um so this is a short no, it's Friday morning while it's, uh, working. So let's see, let's see whether I'll I'll have a chat with Carlinga and see whether we can do a Thursday uh, class or not. Um, and then I will continue with the second half. Um, and because this is sort of theory of innovation, right? And we are going into concepts like disruptive innovation, where uh, we 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 often hear these terms being uh, used, you know, in advertising and all of that, but um, they are not used correctly, right? They mean different things. And when we talk about innovation, our ideas of innovation, you know, when you know, in a team, when you're talking about innovation, the ideas of innovation are what you think is innovation and what is actual innovation is is it could be different and you could be calling something else innovation and that's not very good especially if you're pumping a lot of money into things because when if something is innovation there, there's a way that you expect it to be here but what you're calling an innovation is not an innovation it's not, going to, not necessarily going to behave in that way so uh, that causes issues in investments and all of that um yeah so this is sort of there's theory involved and there's a lot of uh, explaining which is kind of sort of heavy so let's do that next lesson and then i can pick it up from there and then we'll go into new areas like open banking um blockchain and virtual currencies we discussed this in uh, earlier but let's expand on these and how banking and payments how all of these are changing with technology um yeah how does that sound yeah right um we will then stop here and thank you for those who joined.